Hi there, in this video we're going to look at aligning images. Why am I doing it? In this case I photograph my desk and I need the exposure level for my desk so I can see all my weird sound boards that I use to help make the sound on this microphone nicer. But because of that exposure level I can't see anything on the screen so I had to change my exposure so I can see the screen but then the background's too dark. What do I do? I mask one out and blend them together but because they don't align I shot these handheld you can see they don't line up. I'll show you how to in this exercise, how to magically line them up so they're perfect with a click of a button. Then we can mask out the lower exposure with the higher exposure and the world is a beautiful place. All right, let's get started. All right, so there's two ways of doing this. There's the caveman way, which we'll do first. Okay, so we're going to go to file, open, open up the auto align one and two, and then I'll show you another way. Both ways are useful. So this one here has got my low exposure for my screen and this one's got my high exposure. And all I'm going to do is go select all, copy, move to this one and paste it. So I've got them on top of each other, but they don't line up because I was hand holding this. And while I adjusted my exposure, it wiggled around. So the auto align feature is select the top one, hold shift, click the last one. We're just doing it with two. You can do it with a thousand. Actually, probably not. Photoshop would freak out, but you can do it with 10 or a hundred maybe. Select all the images you want to align, go up to edit, and there's one down here called auto align layers. Leave it at auto. Seems to always work at auto. Let's click OK. Magically, if I turn the top one off and the one underneath, you can see the screens line up perfect. Cool, huh? Now we'll mask these two to join them up in a second. I just want to show you the other way. So that's the caveman way. And if there's just a couple of images, that's what you need to do. There's another way under file. Let's go to scripts. And we looked at this earlier on. Remember we looked at loading lots of stuff into a stack. The cool thing about it is say I want to load uh, auto align one and two, but let's say there is a hundred. You definitely want to use this automatic feature. Okay, auto align, but also attempt to align them as well. So it's just going to do both processes in one go. It's going to put them all into one file instead of our copy and paste, and it's going to try and align them. Kick back, relax. So with just two images, it doesn't really matter which way you go, but with loads of them, it's easier using that script. Now we're using it for exposure levels. It could just be that you have to kind of move around to get the entire front of a building, let's say, or instead of doing exposure, you're doing kind of like focal length. You're trying to get different kind of focuses along. However, way you got here, what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to put this one at the top, um, the dark one, and I'm going to grab my, because what I want to do is actually have the screen, which I can see in this one, but it's too dark back here, appear on this image because this one, I can see all the background. So I need to combine them too. So with auto align two selected, I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. I'm going to drag a box around here. Did a pretty good job. I'm going to click in here as well. Did a pretty good job. I'm going to go in. There's a little bit here that probably needs a little bit of love. So I'm holding down my option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, just to kind of fix that up. You could use the lasso tool, the polygon lasso tool, which has a straight edge. However you do selection, I'm going to add a mask and hey presto, they're kind of both combined. So the top one is just the screens. This bottom one here kind of fills out the outside. This top one here, what I might do, that's it. That's the end of the tutorial. I'm just going to go through now and show you what I do when I'm trying to blend the two. I'm going to add levels just to the little arrow there says just to the layer underneath. And now I'm going to kind of try and make it look more believable. There were too dark there, there's too much detail. So I'm just kind of finding, fine tuning uh, what looks real, but still legible. Whereas before, remember, totally illegible. Exact same screen, different exposure, I can see more. All right, a couple of last little things I want to do to touch it up, but you can go now. Uh, this is just me messing about to fix this up. So the easy way would be to grab the crop tool and just kind of like shrink it in there, crop all those kind of uh, transparent pixels out. And yeah, nobody would know, yeah, except for that bit. But let's experiment with our cool new tools. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Like you saw me earlier on using the magic wand tool to grab the edges over here. And you probably noticed the little white bits appeared in the corner and I kind of ignored it. I shouldn't have. I'm here to repent and show you a better way. We're going to use the lasso tool. Okay. The polygonal lasso tool, which is the straight edge version. And I'm going to draw, I'm just going to kind of manually do it. So I'm going to click once, click twice, and I'm making sure I overlap it in a reasonable amount. Click once, come all the way back to the beginning. And where it gets close to the beginning, you see that little circle appears. That means it's a complete selection. Now to add to the selection, I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to maybe start down here. Once you've started adding, you can let go of shift. 
because if you don't, it really wants to do straight lines. So just shift to get it going. Okay, click around here, we'll do it one more time. It's a bit of a weird one, that one. So shift to get going, so I'm gonna click once, then let go of shift. So it is adding, but it's not trying to do straight lines. You can see how overlapping I am there. Um, shift, get started, any which way you like to do a selection. Okay, and then we're gonna go to edit, fill, and I have no idea how good or bad this is gonna be, let's just see. Not bad-ish. Pretty good job though, like, that's pretty crazy. Like, my whiteboard has now just got magically bigger. It's reusing some of the numbers. My microphone got a little bigger. The desk is not too bad, it's a little bit weird perspective. This is good, something weird's happening down here. The blanket that I've got pinned to my whiteboard. Why? Because if I don't, that whiteboard somehow vibrates. So on the microphone, instead of me sounding crystal clear, I sound like I'm recording in the, like, bathroom. All right, I missed a bit there. Get the idea. Uh, the last thing I want to do is maybe the edges here is a little bit white. You can kind of see it coming through here. The cool thing, remember, we've got our sweet new trick when we select on the mask, select a mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the edge. And we've always gone in, okay? I'm going to go out just to kind of expand it out a little bit. And up here, let's have a look at it on the layers. Show original, so just expand it a bit more. I might even feather it. I haven't feathered it, I haven't feathered anything in a long time. Ah, oh, there we go. Click OK, got rid of that kind of really strong edge there. All right, that is not a particularly good photo. I shot it right now. This is the desk I'm sitting at, just as an example. I want to tidy up these, tidy up these cables now. I made this desk. And while it looks kind of cool, I like it. I made it. I made a big ridge exactly where the mouse goes, which doesn't make it useless, but it makes it a terrible uh, desk for anybody using a computer. Anyway, auto align. You might be thinking in your head, I can think of 10 other good ways in my situation to be using it. I use this for exposure. It could be focus links. It could just be you've got images you just need to line up. Some people do it where you've got like a staff picture and you say, okay, everybody say cheese and most of them look, except for Sandra. Sandra's not looking at the camera. But in the next photograph, Sandra's looking, but Dave isn't. I don't know who these people are. So what you can do is you can line them up and then mask out Sandra's face on one of them and have it so both Dave and Sandra are looking at the same time. All right, my friends, that is going to be it. Let's get into the next video.